Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we take a look at headlines, stories, ideas, activities, questions, suggestions, everything and anything we can get our hands on. Uh, get our hands on? Yes, get our hands on so that we can share information and have a great time living here in Puerto Vallarta as a community of English-speaking locals. Today is Thursday, January 19, and as always, it is a pleasure to get together with you, although I will admit that today has to be the one of the most awkward broadcasts I will present to you for a number of interesting reasons that collided yesterday. First of all, I had a full day in town, and uh, I got home very late, and I thought to myself, well, I have no idea what the news are going to be like tomorrow, but surely tomorrow morning I will wake up, and there will be plenty of headlines to choose from, and uh, the pickings were very slim. So you'd think I have a lot of cultural-related topics ready, um, and as a matter of fact, I didn't. So I had to go fishing for a number of activities that I found today, uh, online for you to consider. So it, this is going to be mostly a chit-chatty morning, but I will make some interesting recommendations that you may want to consider for keeping yourselves busy in the days to come. Before we dive into this, of course, as always, we welcome everyone to the broadcast, and particularly those of you that are watching live for the first time. If this is you, all you have to do is write down uh, the word new in your comment, and we'll be so very happy to give you a nice welcome. Um, and uh, if you have something important on your mind, um, please let us know by adding a capital letter Q. And we will look at your Qs at the end of the broadcast in the comment section. Now, the other day I saw some cues that snuck past me that were added to the comments um, after the broadcast had ended. One of them came to mind and I'm gonna honor it right now because it was a very good question. Somebody was asking, where do I find tamales for Candelaria Day? As you may recall, um, there is this tradition in which you eat the bread that we enjoy so much on Three Kings Day, which was this past January, uh, Feb January 6th. And once you eat the bread, you run the risk of running into a little plastic Jesus figurine. And if you find the plastic Jesus figurine, you are, uh, in theory, responsible for bringing tamales to a party. So a very nice person asked me on a, on a comment, Paco, where can I find tamales for a party that I'm going to throw? And the answer is simple in a way, but not really in another way. There are not that many places in town that have tamales on their menu. Um, for example, there is the, I think it's called El Campanario, across the street from the, from the church, has tamales on their menu. I don't know if you can order a large number of tamales from them. Tamales 
tend to be kind of like apple pie in a sense that, first of all, they're prepared differently in each region and everybody swears by their own recipe. I am not very particular about my tamales, although I tend to frown a little bit when I go out and buy tamales at uh, a stand and I start cutting into them and I realize that they don't have that much filling, which tends to be the most common case. Where do I get my tamales? I get my tamales to go in one of three places. One, the little store around the corner. So if you have little convenience stores in your neighborhood, the first thing you want to ask is, do you sell tamales? Uh, there are two tamale, tam, tamales vendors on Insurgente Street. Uh, one is almost across the street from Encanto, one block over. And the other one is one block further down outside of the, the chicken restaurant. And I usually buy tamales from them. They're good enough for me. I'm not looking for masterpieces. And um, these folks are more likely to have large number of of tamales that you can buy for a whole party or at least i'm sure you can order them from them other than that i would be curious to find out where everybody or anybody is getting their tamales these days and that was a very long introduction let me share with you <clears throat> the one piece of news that i found that is almost relevant to the rest of the program so let's take a look Puerto Vallarta, okay, show the photograph, Paquito, there you go. Puerto Vallarta has become the only municipality outside of Guadalajara's metropolitan area with its own culture and arts council. This council became a reality after months of searching ideal candidates from different artistic disciplines. And now that the council seems to be complete, it will allow its members to steer the cultural agenda of our city alongside with our local government while being watchful of how the Department of Culture's budget is spent. What does this translate to in day-to-day in, in -day terms? We have no idea because we don't know exactly what the agenda is going to be. Um, but... It's nice to know that at least this council will have the ability to remain vigilant of how the cultural activities of the city are designed and implemented. Let us, um, yes, we have to show that photograph. Let us take a look at our weather really quickly and we will continue talking about all kinds of events that I wish to share with you. <laughs> Excuse me, I had to deprive an entire city of electricity to generate this nice weather for you. Well, thank you, Mr. Snarky Weatherman. Today is 23 degrees, feels like 24. Humidity is at 50%, and our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 74 degrees. The weather forecast for today says... Mostly cloudy through the day with a high of 26 and a low of 18. Then uh, tomorrow Friday, partly cloudy through the day with a high of 27 and a low of 18. And Saturday, we'll have a clear day, you can see forever, uh, with a high of 27 and a low of 16. I am singing Barbara Streisand's songs for a reason, and I'll explain that in a second. But first, let me give you a quick rundown of my day yesterday, if I may, because it has everything to do with some of the content that we're going to share. Yesterday, for the first time, I had the opportunity to witness in person a section or a portion of one of Oculto's cooking classes. This happened, as you know, Oculto is the project that Carmen and Claudia have here in town where they offer private dinners, but also Mexican cooking classes in which they take you to the market to pick up ingredients, and then you go to the butcher to pick up meat and learn about carnitas, and then you go, you know, you go, you go shopping for the ingredients, and then you build a little menu that you get to enjoy for lunch. Well, I have some friends visiting from out of town, and I had the opportunity to join them as uh, they were completing their class and they were getting ready to sit down for lunch. And of course, it was a great time to visit with my dear friends, Carmen and Claudia. And uh, 
And I have to tell you that it is definitely worthwhile. The class is um, because you get an apron, you get recipe books, you get to prepare salsas, you get to prepare. Well, they have a set menu, but it is the first time that I got to see the cooking classes in action. If you have not taken these classes or if you have not seen the space where Oculto um, has their private dinners, you are... Uh, in for a treat if you wish to consider this option. So that was that. And then after that, I had to run around uh, Emiliano Zapata and complete some missions and uh, run some errands. And the first one that I want to show you happened unexpectedly because I ran into one of my favorite boyfriends. This may be news to you, but I have a thing. Yes, I have a thing for Dr. Simi. Don't ask. I have no idea what it is. And I know that I am a 60-year-old man with a sane mind and a quirky sense of humor. But every time I see Dr. Simi, I feel compelled to hug him. It's not even sexual. I cannot explain it. So yesterday, I... Um, I saw Dr. Simi and I felt compelled to hug him and I had somebody take my photo and my day got a little better after that. And then, of course, I want to tell you about one of the reasons why I was <clears throat> in town and the reason was that I went to see Brent Barrett's My 40 Years on Broadway with our beloved Dr. Mark Hartman on the piano and... Um, and I tell you, there's only one show left, and I'm going to tell you why you may want to consider going to the final show this coming Sunday. Some of us have had the pleasure and the opportunity of seeing a live Broadway show on Broadway. The real deal, you know, real Broadway stars doing their thing on the Broadway stage. We don't get that opportunity very often. We get a number of of performers that visit our town, some of which are absolutely, truly wonderful, but to see the real deal, a seasoned Broadway star come to Puerto Vallarta and still be at the top of his game, it's a rare treat. And that is the experience that you get when you sit through a concert with Brent Barrett performing and Mark Hartman on the piano. One of the nice things that I want to uh, tell you that it was a surprise, and it's something that Encanto may want to pay attention to, is the show that was performed right la last night. And I called it a concert deliberately because it took place down at the theater. Now, as you know, Encanto has the bar space upstairs, which can be loud and not conducive for every performer. Whereas this time, the Brent Barrett performance took place at the theater, which, in my humble opinion, is a more deserving space for such a seasoned and wonderful performer. Um, the amount of name dropping that goes on here is crazy, but wonderful, because Brent, aside from having a huge, talented, wonderful voice, he is the humblest person you could ever see on stage. He will tell you names of people that he has performed with and anecdotes and so forth and so on. And we tend to think of people that drop names as people that are going to be obnoxious about it or cocky or whatever. Not in this case. Not in this case. And I will say I have loved Mark's playing for many, many years. And it seems to be getting even more robust. I don't know what Mark is having for breakfast, but his, his fingers seem to be freer throughout the piano and the ability to create dramatic statements while they were performing was just incredible. So I have to tell you, and I hope that Encanto will get into the habit of showing the difference between things, <clears throat> excuse me, that are taking place upstairs where it's a bar, it's a cabaret bar, but it's a bar and it's noisy and things that are happening downstairs at the theater where despite the fact that there is still cocktail service, people's attention to what was going on stage was just amazing. And that is the best way to enjoy this kind of performance. 
I loved being there. I was grateful to have been treated uh, to the performance. But um, I tell you, this is the real deal. And if you can go see Brent Barrett's final performance, I strongly recommend it. Now, of course, you know that I pray by anything that Mark Hartman does. And tonight I'm going back to Encanto to enjoy a performance by Seth Sykes, who's going to perform a mostly Streisand performance. Um, I don't even know if it's going to be at the theater or upstairs, but I am spoiled now. I really hope it's going to take place downstairs. I ran into Seth um, and we chatted briefly. We're not best friends or anything, but I. it's funny. The only time I've heard him is when he has done like promo songs in somebody else's show. So this is the first time that I will get to enjoy one of his performance from top to bottom. And every time I've seen him get on stage, he just bursts with joy and energy. It is just amazing. So I'm very much looking forward to my first performance of Seth Sykes. This time around, he's doing mostly Streisand. He has only one show tonight. Um, but I understand that he is going to come back into town at some point this season, and he's going to offer this performance again. But I'm not sure of all those details. Um, if you enjoy the repertoire of Barbara Streisand and you want to hear it done by another professional, uh, Seth is very popular in New York City's uh, nightclubs, and he is a joy to watch. So this is happening in my agenda tonight. And then, of course, um, my very own workshop on vernacular Spanish is coming up. So I had a mission in town that has to do with it. And I'll show you that mission in a second. But first, I wanted to tell you that tickets are selling. I'm excited. In the workshop, um, we're going to talk about all kinds of things from a history of Spanish, where the language came from. Uh, we're going to cover some basic language facts. We're going to talk about Spanish words that were borrowed from other, from other languages and, and the contrary of that, Spanish words that have been gifted to other languages. We're going to discuss the inevitable connection between Spanish and Nahuatl, which is the language that was used by the Aztec. We're going to talk about Spanish words that you can speak comfortably here in Mexico, but will get you into trouble in other Spanish-speaking countries. We're going to discuss delicious Spanish words, some of our favorite words, and we're and now I'm wondering what are some of your favorite Spanish words. If you want to write that in the comments, I'd love to read them. And um, we're going to talk about lazy Spanish. You know, some of you like your acronyms, but here in Mexico, it's not so much about acronyms. We like to cut our words in half and because we're lazy. So I'm going to share a few words that we tend to cut in half and one in particular that has become a very amusing mistake that is common among uh, English speakers here in town. And you're going to get a kick out of that. So, of course, this is not until next week. It's on Wednesday, January 25th. It's going to take place at the Joint Coworking Hotel at their beautiful upstairs event center. And because I wanted to make sure that you know exactly where to go and how to get your tickets, et cetera, et cetera, I put together this short little video yesterday afternoon that I want to share with you today. Okay. I am now walking down Insurgentes and heading towards the entrance of the joint co-working hotel. Yes, I am. I to show you where you have to go to get the ticket for my lectures and where the actual event center is located. You come into the hotel through the front door. You go over to the front desk where there will be some very nice people ready to sell you a ticket. And you're going to hold on to this ticket because it's important. And I'm going to ask you're going for to head it. upstairs to the event center. The event center is located on the second story. Unfortunately, there is no elevator in use, 
but it's just one flight upstairs. Once you get upstairs, you come through these doors, and this is where the co-op is located, the joint co-op, or the, rather the co-work, is located upstairs. And the event center is this room back here. And this is where the lectures take place. It's that simple. And there you go. And there you go indeed. And of course, <clears throat> The Joint Co-working Hotel is expanding, uh, constantly expanding their offerings. They've been having this very popular series of air fryer classes, and there's going to be another one um, coming up in a couple of days. This one about how to make seafood on your air fryer. It's going to take place on Saturday at 11 a.m. I'm excited to see that the Joint Co-working Hotel is not only doing cooking, but they're also doing a series of photography courses and other topics. So it is as close as an adult education center as we've seen here in Puerto Vallarta. And I hope it will continue to flourish in that regard because we all need things to do, uh, or at least some of us do. And speaking of things to do, I want to mention a series of other things that I found this morning on Facebook that caught my attention. The first one being this upcoming six week course that is going to be offered by the living room bookstore and cafe. Now I'm not prepared to tell you a lot of details about this, but I'm going to say that the, the course is called the listening path, the creative art of attention. And it is based on a book called the listening path by Julia Cameron, who also wrote the author, she also wrote the artist's way. Now the artist's way, is a book that I can definitely talk about. And I had no idea that Julia Cameron had continued to write other very successful books. But this book, The Artist's Way, was so significant for me during college. Um, it was published in 1992, and it's a self-help book that was written to help people with artistic creative recovery. And it includes techniques and exercises for you to do and in, in and that allow you to develop your own creativity. And it is a book that you can um, go through on your own. Or you can choose to do it as a workshop with friends. So when I was in college, we would all take our copy of The Artist's Way. And, um, and then we would do the exercises. And then we would get together to compare our creativity exercises. So if this workshop that Kelly is going to offer is anything like the artist's way, um, I tell you, it's going to be a wonderful thing to attend. Again, I'm not familiar with the book and I'm not familiar with the dynamics that are going to take place during the workshop, but just knowing that it comes from Julia Cameron, um, I think it's going to be wonderful. And of course, one of the first things that I'm going to do after the broadcasts is over is I'm going to go Google this, this new book called The Listening Path, because if there is something that I suffer from, and I'm sure a lot of people are suffering from in this uh, social media day and age, is losing our ability to stay attentive to something. So kudos, and I hope that this goes well, just as I hope this goes well. This is definitely not for me, but the nice folks in Marina Vallarta are organizing a, a roller skating event at 6.30 p.m. when it starts getting dark. I love it. <laughs> Actually, I don't love it. I haven't been on roller skates in forever, but apparently uh, uh, this is going on this coming Tuesday, January 24th at 6.30 p.m. If you have roller skates, who has roller skates? I don't know who has roller skates, but I thought I would share this with you. Um, of course, people are encouraged to take their skating boards or bicycles and whatnot. So there you have it. Not for me, but some of you may just want to oil your old roller skates. 
Then this one caught my attention as well. If anybody knows anything about the Sula Society here in Puerto Vallarta, I would love some feedback. I don't know anything about this um, this organization that cares for over 300 dogs, but they're going to have an evening at El Jardín de la Versalles, which we discovered recently and we talked about. And this is going to be a 5 to 10 event during which you are going to find out more about the shelter. You get to find out how they care uh, for their dogs, how the donations are spent, how to become a volunteer. And even though I don't know anything about the Sula Society, I definitely personally applaud any time any kind of nonprofit organization creates these type of open house events where we can become more informed about their causes and how they go about doing what they do and so forth and so on. So again, this is happening a week from today on February 2nd from 5 to 10 p.m. No, that's two weeks from today. What am I talking about? We still have two weeks before we get into February. I also want to remind you that the nice gals at the Annex Studio and Gallery at the Witchery Salon have been publishing all these wonderful creative arts and crafts workshops. If you're ever looking for something to do um, with your hands and learn a new craft or a new skill, definitely follow their Facebook page because there's always something fun going on. Uh, what else do we have? I have one more again. Uh, this is not coming on for a while, but on February 20th, Jack's Bar and Grill in Bucerias is going to have a chili fundraising event that will benefit the Bucerias Migrant School and Refugee of Hope Bucerias. Again, not, not familiar with these organizations, but this seems like a good way and a good time to get acquainted and get connected. And speaking of getting acquainted and connected, this is the last time we will remind of tomorrow's Coffee and Headlines Meet and Greet. And, um, and that'll happen tomorrow at Whiskey Kitchen from 6 to 8 p.m. Unfortunately, Gina will not be with us. Her father passed away, and um, which means we're going to be sending her a lot of good love tomorrow afternoon. She's going to be back in the United States to be close to her family at this very sad but very important time. And this, my friends, I think brings us to our chit-chat section. And what do you know? It's already 10.59 and we ended up having a lot of information to share. Let's see what is on your mind. Good mornings here, good mornings there. Yesterday, I ran into Brian and his husband, and it was so nice. We were sitting down at the uh, Secret Wine Bar. I was waiting for my friends there prior to the show, and, um, and we had a good time conversing. I was happy to find out that the wine bar is now starting a series of wine tasting events. I asked Chris, do you need some help publicizing yours? And he said to me, it sold out already. So hopefully, as they continue to announce these events, we will find out ahead of time so we can at least try to get a ticket. Let's see. There's a queue. Good morning from Wales Central. Over 20 minutes of Wales breaching from Playa Camarones to Rosita from my balcony. Incredible. I need a drink. I love it. I love it. It's just seeing the Wales breach is absolutely wonderful. Uh, Holly is back catching us live for the first time in a long time. It's great to see you, Holly. Uh, speak of the devil, Christoph. As always, it was a pleasure to spend some time at the Secret Wine Bar yesterday. Just love it out there. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Anxious to hear the survey results. Do you want to take a glimpse into the survey results today or do you want to wait until Saturday? It's already 11 o'clock. And since I didn't quite know how today's broadcast was going to go, I put it together, although it's not complete, but I can give you a glimpse today if you write the word survey in your comments as I continue to read. Let's see what else. Sherry says that the tamales are great at El Campanario. I agree with you. 
Albert says Café de Olla, or at least I think Café de Olla has tamales. This is good to know. Uh, but again, I don't know if you can just get to Café de Olla and say, I want an order of these many for my own private party. And I think that's what this particular person was looking for. Uh, pam boom. <laughs> In a town where things don't always run on time, I have to say your water guy is consistently on top of it. Are you thinking, are you talking about the guy that comes by every morning whistling, his, blowing his whistle? Yes, he's always out there. Um, Joey and Isaac, Isaac, Joey and Isaac from Gay Guide are ex expert tamale makers, but of course now they're big time publishers. I don't know that they have enough time to be making tamales for other people, but I remember when they were trying to find their path, they would make tamales for a bunch of people. Uh... Oh, what a great suggestion. Thank you very much, Gary. Gary says that Tamales Chayito sells 200 to, uh, a dozen for 240 pesos. They are on Facebook and deliver for free. I will look that up. Thank you very much for that suggestion. I will make myself a note to find them. Uh, -pam -pum -pam -pum. Let's see. Oh, oh, I have a story about this. Jonathan says, ran into one of the elu uh, elusive new red buses on the way home yesterday. It was ahead of the bus I was on, so I didn't get a very good look. I was sitting at the secret wine bar yesterday. I was sitting facing the street. Of course, it's behind a Danish pastry restaurant. But from where I was sitting, I saw one go by. Whoops, sorry, microphone. I saw one go by and I almost got up from my chair just to run out the street to look at it. But no, I haven't had a better sighting just yet. Um, Frank reports that the current director of the Puerto Vallarta Game and Scores has been appointed to the new Cultural Council. That is great news. I think that is great news. Um, and again, hopefully they'll get some fun things done and important things done. Um, it will be great to interview the new director of the Game and Scores. Frank, maybe you can put me in touch with him or maybe I can do some research, but it would be good to see what's going on there. And while we're at it, excuse me, I reported a couple of days ago that, that the, Puerto Vallarta, the Puerto Vallarta Game and Scores is looking for members. I understand there are some additions going on. We shared their Facebook page a few days ago. Um... Let's see. Yes, I know. My thing about Dr. Simi is it's just my thing, you know, and I'm not going to defend it. It's its what I do. Um, let's see. Sounds like you have a very busy weekend ahead of you. Wow, I am envious, I must say. Well, yes, because between friends out of town and going to these shows... And doing the meet and greet and preparing for the lecture next week. It's been a busy time, but I'm enjoying it very much. Um, no smoking now anywhere. This is true. Um, and I've been having interesting conversations with restaurant friends, uh, restaurant owner friends about how they're implementing things. And, um, and it'll be interesting to see how this new uh, law actually gets followed in the city. Liz asks, any chance this lecture can be made accessible to members even with a ticket price? I assume you're asking because you're not here in town. Um, and what we'll do is, uh, I don't I don't have a clear answer about this, Liz. What I may end up doing with this particular one is offering it live on as a broadcast i don't know that I, i'll be able to to videotape the first one but we will offer it several times there was a question at some point from someone i want to go but i'm not going to be in town and what's going to happen with these lectures if all goes well is that they will be rescheduled on an ongoing basis um yes i noticed as i started playing the video that the volume was low my apologies um, Dan, who I hope is feeling better from COVID, says my favorite word is burbuja. I love it. Burbuja means bubble. Uh, 
Betsy bought tickets for the lecture this past Tuesday. Thank you very much, Betsy. Hold on to your ticket stub. We will need those to tally at the beginning of the lecture. Um, and Kelly, who had no idea that I was going to mention her, her workshop at the Living Room Bookstore and Cafe, is happy. Well, Kelly, I love that book, that uh, Julia Cameron book, The Artist's Way. I loved it in college, so I'm totally intrigued about what it is that you're going to be doing. For me to be able to join would be a little bit challenging because I'm always you know, in the middle of the day and for better or worse, I have to focus on what I'm doing here. But I truly, truly hope that it is successful for you. And I applaud, Kelly, the fact that you are offering all these very interesting cultural events at your bookstore. What a great way to build community. How awesome is that? Um... I'd crack my head open too, Albert, if I went on roller skates. So that's why I said it's not for me. But, you know, why do you know? Uh, thanks for the events info. Well, this is part of some of the feedback that I'm getting from you um, through the survey. Uh, you want to know about events. So I'm trying to figure out a way to, uh, to better connect you with events as I find them on Facebook. Uh, -bum 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 -bum. <laughs> Kathy loves the word chuleta. It's a great word. It, it's delicious. It's, it, it is one of those words that in my mind is, it feels good. To, it tastes good in your mouth when you say it. Uh, Tommy, it's great to see you. I'm happy to say that I'm going to see you on Saturday because we're, some of us are going to go watch Amy perform Saturday night at um, at your at your joint uh so it'll be a lot of fun to 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 see you and it's great to see that you are back for those of you that don't know we're going to be watching uh, amy armstrong's show live we're gonna go to nacho daddy on saturday night i don't know if there's still tickets or not and um but if you want to join us it's going to be saturday i believe it's at seven there you go. And a bunch of you want to see the survey, so I'll prepare that and I'll show it to you in a second. Let me just keep going through the comments to, uh, oh, Deb. Yes, the book is amazing because it it is, it, just buy it, just buy it. If you're an artist or if you're not an artist, uh, an artist just buy it. It is, it is a great book. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, let me um, get out of Chit Chat Music because I get a little distracted with it. Uh, and let me show you a quick glimpse <clears throat> into what the survey is starting to look like. So far, we've had 312 responses. Uh, for starters, do you usually watch Copy Headlines live on Facebook or on YouTube? That's literally split into half right now, which doesn't surprise me. I see that even though we don't get as high numbers on, on, on YouTube live, I mean on Facebook live, we see that a number of people watch the broadcast later on on YouTube and those numbers are going up, which means that you know some of you have better time listening um, later on in the day, and that's perfectly fine. When we ask if you prefer watching Coffee on Headlines on YouTube, would you want to be able to watch it live and comment? Many of you said no, but uh, or not very important, but and not many of you said very important, but there's enough here in the middle that we may try to start doing Facebook and YouTube live at the same time that involves an additional um, expense on my part, but there's a new version of the software that I use to do these broadcasts um, coming out, and I'll see, I'll see what the choices are. How interested are you in local news? Oh my goodness, this makes me so very happy because many of you want to know what's going on here in Puerto Vallarta. Not as many of you want to know what's going on in the rest of Mexico, but look at that. Uh, still, there are enough of you that um, that want to know what's going on in the country because this is where we live. So this is a good thing for me. 
How important is learning the weather forecast as part of our regular broadcast content? You guys are all over the place, but the good thing about the weather forecast is that it is easy to put together. It doesn't imply any production time or major effort, so we're not going to change the weather forecast. Um, the vast majority of you like how we've been divided the important news from the more casual stuff, so there's not going to be any change in that. And then we start getting into the topics. And it's funny because, uh, for example, these are the food-related topics. I haven't had a chance to look at all the additional suggestions. And that's something that I'm going to have prepared for, for Saturday. But only 11 of you are not interested in food-related topics. Many of you want to know about new restaurants. And <clears throat> in general, the uh, interest in food-related topics is high which does not surprise me. And I'm, in fact, it makes me very happy because we love writing and finding out about food. Um, and let's see, moving right along. This is about activity. Only seven of you said I'm not interested in activities, which is fine. Many of you are interested in activities that involve walking. Uh, some, not as many activities that involve transportation. A high number of you are interested in courses, classes, workshops, adult education offerings, which is part of what we were reflecting today. Not many of you want to get in the water, which I find, it, uh, I find amusing. Many of you want to know more about local neighborhoods, so trust me, we will have more walking tours coming. Um, <laughs> I love this because not many of you want to get involved in arduous sport-related activities which is a relief because yours truly is a gentleman of a certain age. I don't go out doing like butch things anymore. And of course, interesting cultural and historical content about food items from Mexico is high. It's one of my favorite topics. So again, there's not that many changes between this survey and what we've been doing. Speaking of culture, um, you are most interested in features about Mexican history, culture, tradition in general, and most interested in contextual information that relates to specific Mexican holidays, which, as you noticed, towards the end of last year, we started doing this, you know, doing specific uh, coverage of Day of the Dead and so forth and so on. So this is right up my alley, which makes me very happy. Some of you are interested in gallery openings in Puerto Vallarta, and some of you are interested in cultural events in Guadalajara and other Mexican destinations. Since I look at those for my personal benefit, it's no big deal for me to add them. So this is, this is all pretty much what I expected to find. Now, this took me a little bit by surprise because this is the nightlife and entertainment related uh, topics. Many of you are not interested in nightlife, but in past survey surveys, you were less interested in nightlife and shows than you are today. So maybe more people are going out because if you look at the number of you that want to have news of upcoming performances in Puerto Vallarta, the number is super high. This is probably the one figure that has surprised me the most. Um, I suppose it's because you are more interested in going out now that COVID mandates are, are more relaxed and so forth. Um, this is complicated for me because it makes me wonder if I am going to feel comfortable recommending or talking about shows that I would not want to go to. As you know, for better or worse, I have very specific views on shows that are live versus shows that are feature uh, canned music, so I don't know that we're going to be talking much about sh shows that are not good quality shows in my book. I don't know exactly how we're going to handle that, but it's nice to see that many of you are interested in going out to enjoy Puerto Vallarta's nightlife and entertainment scene. Um, not as many of you interested in Guadalajara, which is okay. I'm still going to look into that because... I know that some friends of mine like to get out there every now and then. Um, reports of performances I have attended, um, I'm happy to talk about that, and as we did today. 
reports about film openings or new shows to binge on. I'm happy to talk about that because it's part of what I'm doing. And I might say I've been watching The Crown finally. And oh my God, it is brutal and it is wonderful. Reports on films that I have watched. There's some interest in that. And I'm always happy to do that without spoilers. And again, all these additional comments is what I have yet to tally. Then this has to do with how we present new places, whether it's restaurants or shops or walking tours and so forth and so on. And the vast majority of you would rather see a combination of photos or videos, depending on what's most appropriate, which in my mind translates to Paco. You go out there, look at what is out there and present it in the best way possible. So I don't feel the pressure to always show you a pristine video or something that could be more time consuming. There might be some times in which we just show a few photos of a place because that is what is appropriate. And sometimes in which we'll do a full fledged video. Um, you are sort of interested in casual videos that I present from YouTube every now and then which is fine. You're not very keen on that, but I will continue to do that. So continue to expect everything from fart videos to interesting music offerings to this, that, and the other. I just saw a brilliant video, for example, on the history of how movie theater projectors have evolved through history of all things. And I thought it was fun to watch and maybe I will share it at some time in the future. Then this one, every now and then we take deeper dives into a particular piece of music style. How interested are you in this content? N you are not very interested, but you are somewhat interested, which makes me feel like some of you are very, very intrigued about music. Not everybody, and that is okay. It continues to be a topic that is of most importance to me. So we will continue to do that every now and then. And of course, now that I'm starting again, my music appreciation lectures, maybe we can get our rocks off enjoying those live rather than doing them here on the broadcast. And you are interested in my reviewing the event calendar on Facebook and Eventbrite on a daily basis to reveal upcoming courses and whatnot. So again, and, of, and then there's a gazillion remarks that you left at the very end, which I haven't had a chance to look at. But that's what our survey is looking like. Um, it's comforting because we've been doing a lot of the things that you'd like for us to continue doing. So that makes me feel good. I will take a more, um, a deeper dive into your individual comments between now and Saturday. And that is when we'll look at the rest of the information. So... This brings us to the end of what turned out to be a rather chunky broadcast. I thank you so very much for your uh, comments. Let me just see very quickly if there's any last-minute comments that showed up. We've seen all that. We've seen all that. We've seen all that. Uh, for shows you are interested in, give your recommendation and review. For shows you are not interested in, just list the show with their show dates without comment. That could be a good suggestion. Thank you very much for that, Charles. Again, to replicate the very complicated show agendas that are published by all the different entertainer venues might be a little bit more than I can chew, but I am definitely happy to pay more attention to shows that I think you would enjoy. And if it's a show that is not for me, maybe what I will continue doing is announcing or mentioning those shows in which the performer takes the time to send the information my way. Because ultimately, when we are in the business of doing something or presenting something, it is our responsibility as performers to submit the information to um, information outlets like Coffee and Headlines or the local papers and so forth and so on. So that was our broadcast. As always, a work in progress. Every single one of them is. But as always, I thank you so much for your company, your valuable feedback, and your great suggestions. Have a great day, and I'll see you again tomorrow morning and hopefully tomorrow during the meet and greet.